One, two, three. Are you gonna sing? Are you gonna sing? Yeah, go ahead. Go for it, man. Sing, 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 sing. Y'all will be running out the building. Here we go. Make a powerful noise. Enjoy his noise. Noise. Oh, Bob. Wow. Oh, Good morning, church family. Hello, hello. How are you all? We've got some announcements for you. Um, so this Thursday is book out, 7.30. Y'all come out and be a part of that wonderful ministry and exciting ministry. There's a lot of excitements that go on on Thursday night. Um, Friday, uh, this coming Friday, August uh, 13th, is the men's ministry. They're uh, at 6.30. They have a meal and a message. And uh, men come and be a part of that. It's a wonderful bonding experience. So uh, we invite you to come, please, and be a part of that. Uh, then Sunday, August 15th, there is a play day series. Uh, registration uh, is at noon, and the event starts at 1. So you'll come out and check that out. And then also that same Sunday, we have our elders meeting. The open meeting is at 6 p.m. The closed meeting is at 7 p.m. So if you have any church business, anything you want to talk uh, to the elders about, please come at 6 and talk with them, and then they'll discuss uh, in their closed meeting at 7. Um, then August 29th is 5th Sunday Potluck. Woo! Some good eating. So if you're not familiar with that, what we ask you to do is bring a plate, a meal, a crock pot, whatever, a food to share with church members. And then we just have a whole lot of food and we get to fellowship together as a church family after church service. And then there is another play day series um, that afternoon and registration again is at noon and it starts at 1 p.m. So, I wanted to share with you guys, a couple weeks ago, I was having really bad body cramps, like Charlie horses in my arms and legs and everything. And I don't know if y'all know, but pickle juice is an instant cure for that. Yeah. Yes, and it's good if you love pickles. Um, so, you know, I've been pondering on joy and happiness. And so I was pondering about pickles, and I just was thinking, do pickles have joy? How do they enjoy their lives? Then it dawned on me, they relish it.
Let me try it again.
We got time to do one more in this one, so uh, we're gonna let Brother Robert take us out. Just a second. Well, Brother Bob puts the other microphone there together. 
Um, if it is your first time to be here with us, we just want to say welcome home. So good to have you worshiping with us this morning. We do things a little differently. We don't pass them off our plate. But the Lord leads you to bless the ministry in that manner. And there's a little wooden church house back there by the back door. And also right there by the church house, there's little green sheets of paper. And you might see these in the seats ahead of you. If you Lord speaks to your heart today and you come to a decision for him for the first time, please take just a moment, fill that out, drop it in the church house. It is the most important decision you're going to come to on this side of eternity. We just love to stand with you as you begin that journey. Um, Brother Bob? I'm here, I think. Are you sure? You should be. He's got a green light. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not on you. Uh, come on. Yes, 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 yes. One, two, one, two, one, two. There you go. Come yes, yes, yes. yes. Now. <laughs> <laughs> we got through the, the, the monitors just fine this morning. Now we're going to get to the wireless. And, one, two, one. And it's going to try to turn left on us. Test, one, two, test, 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 test. Uno, dos, tres. Me speaking your Spanish. You know what they call pre Hispanic thinking? Cuatro cinco. <laughs> you can't really tell those kind of jokes anymore, real, can you? <laughs> All right, then. Any prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh Mercy of the insurance company. Yes, sir. Sarah had to leave while they're going to take her brother Tim to the house. His oxygen had to be used to finish the machine. Quit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right, get her done. Perfect. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Comfort for the family. Gotcha. Yes, ma'am. Um, and for Don, um, I can't remember his last name, our Don. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's funny that he wasn't feeling real good, so we can yeah. pick him up. Yeah, Don's not doing very well right now. Anybody else? Don't forget Shannon Malone in your prayers. Through the week, she's still left. Still battling in her battle with the breast cancer, so keep her in your prayers. And after that, Bob, she had surgery a week from Wednesday. She had surgery a week from Wednesday? All right. Wednesday week. Anybody else? All right, let's go before the Lord. Father, we love you so, so very much. Father God, we can never say that enough. So, Father, we do. We love you. We love you so much. Father God, you heard all these prayer requests. Father, I can't pretend to keep up with all of them with my feeble mind. But Lord, just uh, you knew what they were going to be before we even uttered the words. Father God, you, you knew what we needed. And I believe that you uh, began in motion the things that would have to happen in order to answer our prayer requests, Father God, and our needs. You're that awesome. And we'll always thank you for your provision. Father, we thank you for your, uh, for your love. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your grace. Father God, you give, give so much to us, Lord. Just to, we bring our, our nothing to you, and we, you give us your all. So, Father God, we thank you for that. Father God, just to, I ask, Lord, you, you always answer our prayers. You just always do. So, Father, I just pray that, uh, uh, Lord, we... I just, I'm just ready to see what else you're going to do in our, in our church and in our lives. Father God, just what kind of move you're going to make. Father, on that note... Father God, I know that you dwell in each and every one of us. But Father God, when we gather here in this church, Lord, that you're here in our midst as well. So Father God, I'm asking that you just uh, have your will, have your way here in this church today. Father God, we desperately need to hear from you today. Father, we need you. We need to, Father, we've been beat up and, and worried from this, this uh, week that, in battle. Father God, we need re restoration. So Father God, we need encouragement. Father God, we just need to, to know that, uh, that we're still in the battle for you and with you. So Father God, just, uh, uh, I, I can't help but think about that person that may be lost. They're, maybe they're in this, this audience here today or in our media land audience. Father God, I just pray that you would touch that heart that's lost. Father God, by the end of this service, that you would draw them unto yourself and that they would answer that call and they would cry out to you. Father God, and ask your Son to come into their lives. Jesus Christ, and fill the emptiness that they have. And it is in his precious, precious name that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All righty then. Turning your Bibles, if you will, to John chapter 16, verse 33. John, uh, John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, I have, I have told you these things so that, in your, so that in me you may have peace. In this, in this world you will face troubles. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I only use the King James translation here today, with, uh, if you will, King James says that, uh, guys, I don't have it with me, but it, it says, uh, somebody, Jack, uh, who's writing a uh, King James? <laughs> Thought I had it memorized, but I ain't. It says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. That's what I wanted to say. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
title of today's message is Be of Cheer, I Have Overcome the World. There's a young man, his name is Lord Bailey. He's a soldier in Iraq during the Iraqi War. And he wrote home about the experiences he, he uh, uh, saying this to his, to his parents saying this. Uh, we got hit by an improvised explosive device, the IED, today. My brothers in arms, Icar and, and Cohel, were walking out to, the, to inspect the civilian vehicle, and it exploded. They both were, were blown back about 100 foot or so. The hilarious part is that is when they got up, they started yelling and laughing. The I-car came back screaming, Yee-haw! I'm alive! Praise God Almighty, I'm alive. He had the biggest smile in the world on his face. When he got back, he asked me to help him uh, do something. And I said, sure. And he asked if I would pray to God for Thanksgiving with him. And Lord, a, a new Christian ended his letter by thanking God for the opportunity to pray with an Iraqi and, and, and saying, Jesus had, has been the best companion over here. He listens to my, to my cry, prayer, my, my every prayer, excuse me, he listens to my every prayer and answers me every morning with renewed strength and a clear mind. Guys, we're in a battle zone. Battle zone of life. I've spoken about it before. You know, this is that war that goes on that we can't see in that spirit realm all around us all the time. We are in that war because it's God's war. So we are His soldiers. We're in it. And we face satanic IEDs and demonic snipers every day. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. We can have a peace that surpasses all understanding. That is a well, a deep, deep well that, uh, that is Jesus provides for us, the peace that surpasses understanding. And we can have that through Him. The Upper Room Discourse. This is in, the, in John. It's, it begins in chapter 13 and, and goes all the way through chapter 17. And at the last sentence, in the last sentence of his last sermon, that's what this uh, verse 33 is. It just wraps up a sermon. His last sermon. The last words he speaks before he goes into prayer for himself, the prayer for his disciples, and prayer for every believer. And then shortly after that, he is ushered into the, into the progression of being led to the cross. And everything that it ensues, ensued. But in this last sentence of his last sermon, it gives us several principles for inner peace. That's what we're talking about. It's an inner peace. It's deep down in your spirit kind of peace. That's what I'm talking about. In the midst of any and every situation, we have peace. The first principle for inner peace is when he said, in me, you may have peace. This is argu arguably probably the most powerful phrase in the Bible. I want you to think of this, guys. John opens up his gospel by saying in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, was with God, and the Word was God. See, Jesus is the Word of God. That's who He is. And he also says that, that nothing was created that was not created by Him. Jesus is the Creator, is what John is saying. He is everlasting. See, in Jesus, we can live. He gives us life. In Jesus, we have salvation for our sins. In Jesus, we have procreate, we have reconciliation. That's what I meant to say. Reconciliation with our Father. So that we can have a personal relationship with the Creator of the universe. In Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus, we have an attorney. 
battling the devil in the throne room when he comes, uh, goes to and fro from the earth, accusing the brethren. And Jesus, being our attorney, speaks to him and says, He's one of mine. I gave my life for him. I paid his price. He's mine. See, it's all in Jesus. In Jesus, we no longer step into the grave, but we step into eternity when we die. Amen? Amen. It's all in Jesus. Every bit of it is in Jesus. It's Paul's thing. It was Paul's thing throughout all of his writings. Many, many times Paul said, in Christ. In Christ. Like I said, guys, arguably one of the most powerful phrases in the Bible, spoken in the Bible. I mean, the old Paul, the, 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 the whole of the Old Testament is about Jesus. The, uh, the New Testament is like, I, I, I like to think of it like this. I heard it described like this and I love it. The Old Testament is a dimly lit room. The New Testament brings light into that room so that you can see everything. Amen? But Jesus is the light. It, refer, it refers to His union uh, our, it refers to union with Him. Our union, quite specifically, our union with Him. You know, I've always... Jesus said that I am in you and you are in me. Now that's kind of a tongue twister to me. I can, I can understand Jesus being in me. Because I can compartmentalize that by what I can see, what I know. Amen? See, the, if we can understand, usually we can only understand what is relevant to, uh, in relation to what we see around us, what we feel. You know, seeing is believing. Type thing. Well, I know, we know that we are made in God's image. We have a mind, we have a body, we have a spirit. And we know that that emptiness that we go around with in life that needs to be filled is in our spirit. And we know that when we ask Christ to come into our lives, we are indwelled with His Spirit. So we can understand Jesus in me. That's pretty easy. But what about the, uh, that we are in Jesus? We are in Jesus. Uh, here's, a, here's a way to help understand that, I believe. If you're, uh, if you're walking on the beach in Galveston and you see a bottle laying there. And you pick that Bible up. And you take the cap off. You walk over to the Gulf of Mexico there, to, to the ocean. And you fill that bottle up with the water, with the ocean water. And you put the cap back on it. And then you throw that bottle out into the ocean, back into the water. Well, the water's in the bottle. But the bottle is in the water. Amen? See what I'm saying? I like that. Someone once said that uh, Jesus didn't say, these things I have spoken to you, that in your circumstances you might find peace, or might have, have peace. And He didn't say, these things I have spoken to you, that in the, in the love of others you might find peace. He said, he said, in me, in me you will find the peace. D.L. Moody, in order to, to describe this, this phenomenon too that I'm, I'm talking about, says D.L. Moody had once said that uh, if, he was, if he saw a man in a cellar shivering from the cold and the dampness of the room, dimly lit so he could barely see, he said, I would say to this man, come up out of the, out of the cellar. Come up into the sun where you have warmth and light and bright light. But suppose the man stayed down in that cellar and said, "No, I'm trying to make a, I, I'm trying to uh, make my own light down here, and I'm trying to bring up within me a warm feeling." Or if he said that, well, that's where a lot of us, a lot of people are today. He said, "They're in the cellar of life, trying to generate a light, a little light." Excuse me. And trying to work up a warm feeling. When what they really need is the light of the, and the warmth of the sunlight of Jesus Christ. 
He said, in me, you will have peace. So our peace comes from being in union with Christ. So that was D.L. Moody's description. When we confess, our, uh, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, He comes in, He comes to live within us by the living water of, of, the, of the Holy Spirit, the living water of the Holy Spirit. And we are in Christ. Amen. You know, I've, I've said before, I think I mentioned it in last week's sermon, and and I just prayed this, this morning, guys. There's a, a, Christ is in us. There's another way to describe it. Christ is in us. And then when we come together and we form the church, because this ain't a, this is the building until the church shows up. Amen. And we come in here, then we are in Christ because Christ is surrounding us inside this building. Amen? Amen. Secondly, another principle for inner peace is, is when he said, these things I have spoken. Our sense of inner peace grows from trusting his words. But what did Jesus mean when he said these things? What did he mean when he said these things. In the broadest sense, it means that he claimed his claim uh, of the entirety of the Word of God. In another sense, Jesus was, was thinking about the teaching of his disciples from the very moment that he called them on the Sea of Galilee. But very specifically, these things refers to the upper room discourse in John chapter 13 through 17 are remarkable chapters. Because Jesus spoke them in an atmosphere of incredible tension. Think about this just for a moment, guys. Jesus knows everything. He knew that He came down to this world to die. He came to die for our sins. He knew that. And He knew the day was coming. Shortly after this, He would be. He would find Himself in, uh, praying to God, Lord, if it's, if it's possible, if it's in Your will, let this cup pass me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. See, what he was going to face, like I said before, is the journey from that upper room to a process of, of being uh, uh, gathered in, into the, 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 the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying with his disciples at night. It taken from that moment forward to a series of... of, of uh, of events where he would be tortured, he would be beaten and tortured, he would receive the lashes on his back, he would be nailed to the cross, and he would ultimately take the sins of this world onto his shoulders. And as I spoke, described it before, the weight, the, the, the ground quaked beneath him. It was so heavy on him. The sin from the beginning of time to the end of time. It goes on him. He knew all of this. And yet, his thoughts to us was inner peace. To have peace. A way to give us peace. To show us how we can have peace. And the disciples needed it. Because he knew they were going to be scattered. He knew that they were going to go to their own places. Back to their homes. He knew that Peter was going to deny him three times. He knew all these things, and he knew they needed some inner peace during these moments. And God, let me tell you something. Whatever you're going through, Christ Jesus has the same desire for you to give you an inner peace. Whatever struggle, whatever temptation, whatever tribulation that you're facing, that's his desire. That's his will for us. Thirdly, another principle for inner peace, this comes in the form of a warning. It says, in the world, this is when he said, in the world you will have tribulation. It's a warning. Our inner peace, which is based on our union with Christ and grows as we trust in His Word, will be assaulted by the world. 
Jesus promises, and I hate it when people say, you know, if you just come to Christ, if you accept Christ, and you're, everything's going to be all right in your world. Everything's going to be great. You don't have to worry about nothing. Jesus doesn't teach that. He teaches that you're, we're going to go through trouble. Amen. When we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts, we're where the devil don't want us to be. Amen. He's mad. He wants to take us out. Amen. There's going to be trouble and tribulations. That's what he teaches. We're going to be assaulted by the, assaulted by the world. Jesus promises that we'll have problems in this world. We're going to face opposition, persecution, satanic attacks, misunderstanding, hurts, heartaches, and things that just challenge our faith daily. There's some good news. Fourthly, another principle for inner peace. See, Jesus didn't end it there. He gave a, a prescription for that going through all of that trouble. The last thing he said, but be of good cheer, I have overcome. He didn't end it there. It's teaching there. Here's the last thing he said before his prayer in, in prayers in, in uh, chapter 17. The concluding sentence of three years of ministry the last syllable of the last sermon he preached prior to Calvary. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What he's saying is that I've overcome, I, I've come into the world and, and to live for 33 years without sin. So I can, say, so I can serve as, a, as an innocent sacrificial victim whose blood can be atoned for the sin of the world. He said, I'm, he's saying that I'm going to lay down my life willingly and I will take it back up again. He's saying that the grave cannot, cannot hold me, the death cannot keep me, and I'm going to burst forth from this grave like a uh, like a, a high school football game where they just burst through that uh, that paper banner in victory looking for victory that's Jesus he's going to burst through is it oh death where is your where is your uh, grave where is your victory death where is your sting and because of that we can step because of through him we can step into eternity rather than that to that grave amen He's saying, I have overcome the world. The very thing that we're facing right now, every trouble, every tribulation, everything that we might go through, Jesus has already overcome all of that, and in Him, we can go through anything that makes any difference. That inner peace that I'm talking about, another description I've, I've found here is that it, uh, there's a missionary to China. His name was C.T. Studd. And he, on, his, on his way traveling to China, he was on a ship, on a boat, on a ship. And the ship's captain was an, op an opponent of Christianity. He was an embittered man. And when he heard that, that, Stu uh, that Studd was on the, the ship, he went straight to him and just laid into the man. Just lit into him. Stud didn't argue with him or anything like that. He just put his arm around him and he said, get back to where this is. He said, but friend, I have a peace that surpasseth understanding and a joy that nothing can take away. And the captain finally replied, you're a lucky dog. 
by the end of the cruise, he had given his life to Christ and he had that same inner joy. Amen. No matter what we're going through, we have that inner peace through Christ. Amen. I've learned to rely on that going through some of the things that I've gone through. Let's wrap this thing up now. If Jesus Christ has overcome the world, He can overcome your anxieties and make all things work together for the good, for your good. I love that in Romans 8, 28. He is the great overcome. Whatever tribulations we face, our peace is in Him. It's reinforced by His, by his words. It's assaulted by, by the world. But He says to you and to me in His last utterances, Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, I've described earlier about the Bible, about us being in Jesus and Jesus being in us. That inner peace comes from Him. He is the source. I, I, I think I've made that more than clear here today. In order to have a peace when you're going through things, we, Jesus is the source of that peace. But if you don't have a, that source for that peace, guys, then, then uh, you don't have a hope. You've got to look at the world. You've got to look at Buddha. You've got to look at Confucius. You've got to look at these different religions that's going to leave you empty and wanting. Amen. The only way that you can have peace is through Jesus Christ Himself. That bottle was laying there on the beach empty. Someone had to pick it up, go fill it up with water, and then place it back in the water. Jesus does that for us. He's ready to fill you today with the living water of the Holy Spirit. But you've got to let Him. You have to allow Him. You've got to ask Him. If I'm going to give you something, you've got to receive it. You can't just go around just to uh, act like you, you've got it or going to get it. You've got to take it sometime or another. Jesus is calling right now, this very moment. If you have that emptiness in your heart, it's time to fill that emptiness with his, with the Holy Spirit. And we'll do that through the blood sacrifice of, of Christ Jesus on the cross. If you're watching on YouTube or, or on Facebook, now is the moment of, of salvation. Right now, this is a great moment. You don't know what a day will bring. Something drastically bad could happen to you. And you'll find yourself standing before God. trying to come up with an excuse my wife should let you in this heaven. And the truth is that Jesus said in John 14, I am the truth. I am the, I am the way, the life, and the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you have to ask Christ into your heart. If you're ready to do that here today, I'd like to consider it an honor to, to lead you through this. If you want to ask Christ in the yard, if you're sitting up at home and, or watching this on, the, on media land somewhere, just cry out to God. Repent from your life that you're living. And just say a simple prayer like this. It says exactly what I just said. You have to admit to Him first, Lord, I'm a sinner. And right now, Lord, I turn from that sin. I agree, Lord, that you are right and I am wrong. I want to do things your way. So, Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart now. I receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you died on that cross for my sins. That you rose back to life you're living in me now. I recognize you as my God, my Lord, and my friend. And from this moment forward, I will serve only you. In Jesus' name.
his precious, precious name. Amen. I say this every Sunday. Every time I say that prayer, I say this. If you felt the emptiness that you had, begin to be filled when you prayed that prayer. If you're here in the room, in the building, just to stick around and right after we close, just come and talk to me. And if you're watching on YouTube or, or Facebook, then I have a telephone number right there that you can reach me at. It is by far the most important decision and act that you will ever take place, take part in, in this world. And I need to talk to you about it. If there is a, a what next, need to get you baptized and things like follow our, follow our Lord in baptism. And I just need to tell you a little bit about your new life. Let's just pray one last time. We'll get on out of here. Father God, we love you so, so very much. Father God, we know we're still in the battle. Father God, we know that we face these uh, satanic IEDs every day. Father, we know that this, the enemy, the, the demons around us are, are, are just uh, stuck on top of a building, just ready to shoot us, take us out of, of action, to fire fiery darts at us. Father, I'm asking that you protect us this day. Build us back up, Lord. We're weary from the weak. So, Father, we ask that you regenerate us. Father, God, fix us up in this, in this field hospital and get us back out into the battle. Father, God, beginning when we leave this building. So Father, until we can get back up here Thursday night for Buckout, or until we can be back up here next Sunday, we ask for your protection. We ask for your perfect speed and your favor in our lives. We ask all this in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. Our God, we love you. See you next week. <laughs>